you can actually see the the growth of the economy through the eyes of the seaports now because uh, it is always better as a port planner you know in port planning to be ahead of the economy because marine infrastructure takes a long time to develop um, unfortunately we have been a little bit behind because the economy has grown much much faster than the port could rise up to the occasion and so you now enter the port and you see several vessels loaded with cargo sitting outside waiting to come in uh, and several containers and other cargo looking for space you know to be stored yeah, so what the port is doing now is embarking on the expansion of the ports as a first step, expansion of the existing ports so we've signed contracts uh, with Jean de Noul of Belgium and then with uh, China Harbor Engineering Comp uh, Company to expand the credit port as a first step we've uh, advertised in the papers uh, for expression of interest to expand the port you know where we'll be reclaiming several hectares of land and consulting over six kilometers of breakwater to reclaim land for to create more beds, uh, create a deeper bedding facility where we can take in vessels drawing 16 meters of water that's post, pan, post uh, Panamax vessels. In Takradi, we are going to dry to man 16 meters so we can take large, I mean, bulk or uh, carriers. All these are intended, you know. Uh, for the short to long, uh, I mean, uh, medium to long term, but the long term is to further expand the port, build new ports. You know, at the same time we're creating facilities in Takradi, you know, to cater for the oil industry because Takradi is much closer to the uh, uh, Jubilee oil fields, so there will be the need uh, for some services services to be provided. So in that light. You know, uh, the ports have been planned, and I mean, because marine waste is very is capital intensive, so we're talking of millions of dollars. You know, Takradi alone, we're going to spend about 450 million dollars. You know, and Tema, we are looking for what 801 billion, you know, as some of the first phases. And of course, but these are projects, you know, when constructed, I mean, uh, will last several years, decades to come. I mean, Tema Port was uh, opened in 1960, and up to now we're basically using the infrastructure that was created, even though we've done some, a few expansion works, yeah. So, so that is, that's a major challenge for us. I mean, our government also has planned to construct a number of 11 fish landing sites along the coastline. That will stretch from the far west in Axim to the far east in Keta. You know, these fish landing sites are more of social benefit facilities, you know, intended to address the concerns and then uh, the, the challenges facing the, the indigenous uh, fishermen, you know, whose uh, canoes and boats are always subjected to storm and breakages I mean, during any uh, strong winds. So these fish landing sites are going to be constructed. They also op offer them the opportunity to handle fish and uh, I mean, uh, store them and process them and do marketing in a, in a very good environment, neat environment. Yeah, the, the good thing for us is that they bring, the, there are a number of industries and business enterprises that are looking for space inside the ports, both Tama and Takrali. Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority is an institution that can run itself. We don't depend on central governments. We pay dividend to governments. You know, I mean, government by law has given us the opportunity, the law, to run, even though we are 100% state, but to behave and operate like a pure commercial entity. You know, to what extent can I convince them to trust in that legal philosophy or that operational philosophy so that the easy of uh, hey, is government behind you and that sort of thing is not a, it's not, it's, it shouldn't be a challenge. This, these are the challenges that I will be facing. And the challenge of carrying the rest of the communities surrounding these port developments along. You know, because naturally, there'll be, uh, we will be uh, kind of interfering with their communities. You know, especially as we go into the various districts and townships you know, to, to, to cut out certain developments, you know, we need to be talking to them to appreciate that change is coming 
and change is necessary and that we will have to do that. To me, those are the main challenges that are going to be facing in the coming years.